was one year ago at TCT where we were doing the first in animal uh, experience with something called the uh, Tammy of the Tiara. And it was a great look at a brand new device that's taking a look at a transapical approach to mitral valve replacement. And this time around at TCT, one year later, we're looking at the first in man experience. And I'm with Dr. Anson Chung, MD, surgical director, cardiac transplantation, clinical professor of surgery at the University of British Columbia. Tell me about the Tammy Tierra. Well, it was a wonderful device. Uh, as you already know, the mitral valve is a very complex structure. Yes. Uh, and it's not as easy as the regular aortic valve implantation of a catheter. Uh, the valve uh, had a very complex uh, structure, it would require a very unique technique to fixate the valve onto it. So this uh, uh, special valve, the Neovas uh, Tierra, has a multiple mechanism to fixate that device onto the mitral uh, apparatus. Now this is the October 28th issue of Jack. You've got a couple of patients. Describe the patients and their particular condition when you went and did this? That's right. Uh, since this is a feasibility for, for as first demand series of patients, we pick the patient that are non-surgical candidate. Uh, they're quite they're elderly, very ill, ejection fraction ranges from 15 to highest 25%. Wow. The first patient actually had ejection fraction of 15 to 20% on hemodialysis, uh, had pulmonary fibrosis, really not a very good candidate. Uh, and however, he has severe mitral regurgitation, uh, ischemic origin, and we'll try to help him potentially with this device. Now, when you have aortic stenosis and you're working with uh, TAVR, you've got a lot of ground to get into because you've got the calcium mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. You don't with mitral regurgitation, with mitral replacement. What do you uh, describe the advice in, in, in detail in terms of where it's anchoring and what's happening? That's right. Uh, many devices have different me anchoring mechanism. This particular, this Tierra device, anchored the valve using the atrial skirt and also had taps that anchor itself onto the trigon, the fiber structure of the annulus. Two of them anteriorly and one posteriorly. And that is how it fixates itself onto the onto apparatus. So, how difficult was the surgery? What are you doing now? I mean, where, where is this going? Well, the surgery actually is quite straightforward. You know, we did many animals. We did over 160 animals uh, in, wow. in, the, in, in the study initially. And then we actually went to the cadaver lab. We actually implanted uh, over 25 these devices into human cadavers to make sure that it works properly. Exactly. Uh, and we also work out the technique of implanting uh, this device. Now, when you go to human, actually, it's actually simpler than, it, than, than implant in animals, surprisingly, um, because the, the device is actually right. engineered to fix in a human mitral annulus, not a sheep nor, nor a pig. <laughs> uh, and, and also the, the, the imaging, which is a crucial part of the, this type of implantation, require fluoroscopy and, very important, echocardiogram. Now, in terms of are you doing more patients? Are, are we looking at a prospective study going out one of these days starting soon? Mm -hmm. Well, we actually have done three uh, patients now. Uh, we did the first initial one in January, second in February, and then we just did one uh, uh, on this Thursday. Oh, wow. Uh, and they all went very smoothly. Uh, the implantation uh, took a very short time, uh, you know, skin to skin time, an hour, an hour and a half. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it lent to the delivering system and also the, the, the device itself. It does not require multiple steps of deployment. And, and also that in, when I go back to is in human that we have continuous uh, 3D echo to guide us for the, the implantation. That is a crucial part of, of, of any mitral valve implantation. Tever has been such an extraordinary story over the course of the last 10 to 20 years. Do you think this could end up being this kind of a kind of a wild story in 10 years? Well, I think it's wild. I think mean, nothing is really wild because it's all work out uh, from ground up. Uh, I do think that this is one of the, is a game changer. Uh, first of all, mitral regurgitation it is far more common than my aortic stenosis. More patients be affected, and a lot we don't have a lot of options at this present time. Uh, and if, if this is uh, proven to be effective and also does safe, obviously, that is the, exactly. the key. I think it will change uh, uh, the landscape. Well, this is the lead-off paper, the October 28th issue of JAK. Make sure you take a look at Dr. Chung's paper and the accompanying editorial comment by Dr. Adams for CardioSource World News. I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.